All right, now we're going to try day number four because there happens to be four different bisectors that you have to talk about in this particular unit. So they happen to be the perpendicular bisector, the angle bisector, the median that we did yesterday, and now the altitude. This is the last one. Now, um, when we developed these notes, we kind of cut them back a little bit because of what was going on with COVID and so forth. So we haven't taught you everything, but we have kind of taught you the main characteristics for each one. And what I'm going to introduce is this last fourth one, fourth one, day four, is going to be about an altitude. Okay. Now, an altitude of a triangle is a line segment from the vertex. So let's keep in mind that it connects to the vertex and it goes to the other side, the opposite side, but it makes, most importantly, a perpendicular. Now, the altitude is a funny thing, is that it can actually be inside the triangle or it can be even outside the triangle. Now, what I mean by that is when we really think about altitude, I always think about when I'm flying in an airplane. You're like, hey, I hope that old guy who's flying the plane up front pays attention to the altitude. Well, what you're really paying attention to when you're flying in a plane like that is its height. How fa far above the ground is the actual plane? Well, we're measuring from a plane like say up here at point B and we wanna measure how tall it is or its altitude. Sometimes altitude can be thought of as a height of a triangle. That's the same thing is we measure straight down to the other side at a 90 degree angle. We don't measure diagonally. That makes no sense. It's just like, how far is it straight down to the ground? Okay. Now, if that, in that case, in that one, it was a triangle that was, it was inside the triangle. But if we were measuring the height of this one and we were thinking about the ground over there, we would go straight down to the ground and that would be the altitude. Now, it can actually technically be on the inside. It could be on the outside. It can even actually be a side if the triangle is a right triangle. Sorry, I'm going to draw one over here. Then the actual altitude is a side of the triangle. Okay. But the key thing here is to remember is it starts in a vertex and it goes to the other side and makes a right angle. Now, that's all it does, it just makes a right angle. Now, what we're going to do down here below is we're going to do some things where it says name all the parts. Now, if you're going to do this really well, you have to know all four of the different kinds that we've just discussed. Okay, number one, let's kind of go through the ones that we've seen in the past. Now, the first one you guys saw was that you saw a triangle. This is from day number one. That You could draw a triangle and you'd end up having the midpoint like this. You're like, oh, it's right there in the middle, but then it goes straight up from the actual midpoint, and I'm going to make it so it misses the actual vertex on purpose, but it goes straight up from the midpoint, and it's at a right angle, okay? Now, this one makes sense to be the fact that it is a perpendicular bisector, all right? So perpendicular bisectors have these kinds of notation on them. Now, note that I showed that it doesn't have to go through the vertex. They don't. They are not connected in any way to be have to go through the vertex. All the other ones do. But anything that misses the vertex on the other side is got to be a perpendicular bisector of some sort. Okay. The second one you guys learned was, let's say you had a triangle. But this time the triangle had a segment that was being drawn from it. It went out from one of the sides, one of the corners, but then it showed that the corner was cut into two equal parts. Now, that's definitely saying that the angle is cut up, or better yet, called an angle bisector. Okay, so you're really looking for some really key components, like this part right here is a dead giveaway, it's a perpendicular bisector or this is a dead giveaway that it's an angle bisector. Now, the one we learned yesterday, or on day number three, was say you have a triangle and it comes from one of the corners, but then it just goes to the opposite side. It doesn't have the angle bisector marks, but it says it cuts this one, but doesn't have the right angle. Oh man, well, that's definitely not an angle bisector. 
and it doesn't have the right angle like a perpendicular bisector, that is a median is what's going on there. All right. So it goes to the middle and that is all it does. Now the fourth variety is this fourth variety that we just talked about over here is the altitude. And the altitude comes from a vertex, but it only goes to the opposite side and makes a right angle. And that's all it does. It doesn't cut anything. It doesn't make any angles the same. It just goes as a right angle. Now, what you're going to want to do in these next couple of problems is you're going to want to look at the triangle real carefully and think about those markings that I just discussed in one through four and try and decide which segment actually is showing that concept in this picture. So if I wanted a median, a median would go from the vertex to the opposite side and cut it in half. So the only one that starts in a vertex and goes to the opposite side would be A to B. So you'd be like, oh, AB is the one that is a median. Now, if I was going to try to figure out which one's the angle bisector, I'd be like, oh, it's got to cut the angle into two equal parts. So that must mean that it's got to have this kind of notation on it. And that, that one would be C to F. And that one's a ray this particular time, not a line segment. Okay. So you're seeing that one is going to be that guy. Now, which one of them in that picture is an altitude? Well, the altitude has to start in a vertex, but it only has to go to the other side and be a right angle. So it's got to start in a vertex and it's got to go to the opposite side. Sorry, that's so bad. And it's got to make a right angle. That's all that one does. So it must be D to E that is going to be the altitude. And then the one that is, I've got a lot of lines that are drawn in there. Let me erase them. The only one that is being drawn in there that doesn't have that characteristics of the other two is this one does come down and cut the side into two equal parts. And it does have a right angle. So that must be a perpendicular bisector going up that way. And that would be line GB. Okay. Now, your second semester geo students, you shouldn't be messing up with notation. If it's a line segment, it's a line segment. If it's a ray, it's a ray. If it's a line, it's a line. Get the correct notation on there. That kind of stuff's going to get docked in second semester, and you can't afford it just because you're being lazy on that kind of stuff. Now, here's what I want you to do is try number two and number three and see if you can come up with the correct statements for each one of those. And I'm going to pause it for a second and you can see if you got it right. All right. Now this should be the answers that you came up with for naming all the individual parts of the triangle. And you just got to be real careful. I had a little bit of problems with uh, 2D finding the perpendicular bisector, but they put the point M down below. So it must be MJ. That was the best I could think of for that one. Um, but the other ones, you just got to look at the individual parts very, very carefully. And you can determine which kind is which. Now, there is something to be said about you drawing all these. Could it be possible that something is an altitude and a perpendicular bisector at maybe the same time? And it can happen um, in specific triangles like the isosceles triangle or the equilateral triangle. You'll start to see some of them that they all end up landing on exactly the same bisector line. And that's just because of the triangle's nature, what kind it actually is. Now, down here at the bottom, and number four and five and six. Let's take a look at these and see if there's anything else going on here that would be exciting. Now, when you read these directions, pause at commas and really think about what things are being said. If E is the midpoint of AB, now stop and think about that. If this guy is right in the middle, then that must mean that this length and this length are exactly the same size. All right, now that might be helpful and we'll see where we're going to go with that. Now, the next one says F is the middle of BC. Oh, that means this segment and this segment are exactly the same size. And then last but not least, G, oh, my favorite letter, is the midpoint of AC. So that's the point G right there. So this one must be the same size as that one. Now, as soon as I marked it up like that, I'd be like, man, every single one of those lines 
that connects at those midpoints has to be a median. All of them are. So for this blue one down over here, whatever connected to this midpoint right here and goes to that vertex, that's a that's a median. No way is there anything other than that. That'd be CE would be that one. And then for the green one over there, this line AF, oh, that's a median. That's a good one. And then if I went to the last one, I'd be like, oh, that was a bid GB. And that would be all the medians. And that's just because I recognized that it went to the middle. Now, the others that you're looking at are altitudes. Now, altitudes come from a vertex and go to the opposite side and make a perpendicular. So here is a perpendicular right here, and that goes up the way, and it hits the actual vertex like that. That must be an altitude of what's going on right there. So I've got CD is one of them. Now, the other two are slightly hidden. And remember I said that an altitude can either be in the triangle, outside the triangle, or even on the, on the triangle. So here's a vertex over here, but they drew a line segment that ended up being perpendicular like that. So even though it's not in the circle, it's on the, on, or on the triangle, it is an altitude as well. So that can happen. So BC is an altitude, and it also turns out that this one going from A goes down there and makes a right angle too. So it must be the AC is an altitude as well too. But remember what you're trying to do, vertex to opposite side and make a right angle, okay? Now, when I read those directions, it was important for me to label the picture. That is so important in geo. Label, 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 and read what you're talking about. Okay, because there are certain things that are dead giveaways, like in number five, you're like, oh, I got all this beautiful picture. I don't know what to do with it. But as soon as they say this statement that BT is an altitude, you've got to be like, well, what does that mean? It happens if I draw from B to T and that becomes an altitude like this. Well, altitudes must make right angles. So that would mean that this angle right here has to be a 90. And right away, now I can start the algebra that's necessary and say that 3x plus 30 has to be a 90 degree angle. These two things over here are useless. They mean nothing to me. It's only because of the word altitude that you can come up with the concept that you need. So if I subtracted 3, I get 3x is equal to 87. And then if I did, oops, sorry, 87 divided by 3. And man, G is just not very good at math sometimes. So he's going to grab his calculator because I can't figure that out. 87 divided by, not times G, divided by 3 is 29. And that is the size of X in that. Now, if you put down the number 29 and you just said, oh, X is 29, I win. No, you didn't read the problem. Find AC. Oh, man, now I got to do some plug and chug back inside here to figure out how big each one of those lengths are so I can come up with a total size of AC. So make sure you're answering the question. That's going to be super important. 29 plus 8 is 37, I think. Yeah, I think that's right, 37. And 29 minus 9 is 20. So the total length between these two is 57. And that would be the right answer. It's so amazing on so many final exams where people would pick the number 29 as their answer, but they don't read the question and plug it back in to see what they were supposed to get. So be a, a studious person like that. and You'll get it right. Solve for X. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. All right, solve for X. BD is a median. What does that mean? Well, medians go from a vertex to an opposite side, and they cut the two pieces equal to each other because of the word median and what it does. 6x plus 3 has got to be the same as 7x minus 1. Subtract the 6x on each side, and I end up with x minus 1 is equal to 3, or if I add 1, x is 4. And that is our answer because they wanted just X. Boy, that is a horrible four. Please erase that and fix it, G. Ugh. This is four. There we go. Better. All right. 
Keep plugging away with this. You guys got it under control. 15-minute videos? You're crushing this. Talk to you later.